Welcome to part two. If you'd like an overview of what we're about to go over, please watch part one. Reminder, on Canamore's map that we're doing this on. Uh, if you want more details and information about it, please check the future videos about it, or the video if they're not already been posted, please check the latest. Let's get right into it, because uh, we've only got so much time, so I want to get this right into it. So we went over what we're going to do. Now let's actually do it step by step so you can follow me. So we're going to add a new passive resource behavior, and I'm just going to call this passive resource and I already have two so when I hit suggest it's it's gonna come up different because I, I named it wrong but uh, I put a couple S's in there uh, let me fix that not that it's a huge deal but whatever um, so there and we want this to be above and we're gonna go ahead and just do it straight away just do it straight so you guys can figure out what you're doing here we want this to be a positive buff because it is and we need this to uh, let's see here nothing for here here or here we want this to be a uh, hidden we don't want to see it and we want the maximum our uh, period to two seconds because we want it every two seconds time scale source we want it to be caster and we'll leave the icon as it is for now. Again, you can always dis uh, change it. Uh, display comb down, display shield, that's other stuff we don't need to worry about. Uh, the actual periodic is what we need to do next. But there's one more thing I'm looking for, and I believe that was here. Yes, I want that to be source. And again, as you can see here, source, very important because we need to know what, who the player is so we give it to the right player since we're dealing with a player uh, effect. Just a little tidbit there. So we go ahead and have that set up so we save. Just to, always good to get in the habit of saving after you modify a lot of stuff. Uh, mainly so if something goes wrong, something crashes, you know, everything, you don't lose all that work that you did. So we've created that. Let's go to our effect. Quickly add our effect. Um, We'll just, again, we'll call it passive. Oh, hang on, what did I call the other one? I'm sorry. Uh -huh, passive resource. Okay. So we'll just call this passive resource too. And suggest, and we want this to be a modified player resource. And race uh, doesn't matter. If you want, it really doesn't matter. So just leave it at none. It's fine. Actually, yeah, we can leave it at none. So we have it set up. The next thing we want to do is change this from target to caster. And we want to change what we want to give. So uh, say I want to give um, uh, 10 minerals. We'll just do 10 minerals. That's good. Okay. We have that all set up. Everything good. And we're pretty much done. That's it. It's that simple. All we got to do now, stick the behavior on... Oh, that's right, I always forget that. There is one more thing to do. We forgot to link it. Otherwise, nothing's going to happen if we put on the behavior. Duh. So scroll down, find it. Uh, it's in alphabetical order, so pretty easy to find. So passive resource. Now it's done. Now we can put this behavior on any unit we wish. We can even put it on uh, through a trigger, for instance. Uh, great for you tower defense guys, for example. And that's going to give us a passive resource from that. So play around with that, have fun with that. That's basically how you do that. Now, I need to add more floating text. Um, I already I have my one for the command center that gives five minerals, two vestment gas. I have other resource givers on my map, uh, ones that give minerals, ten minerals, every two seconds, and another one gives four vestment gas every two seconds. So I need to create floating text for them. I have it for my command center, so let's create it for them. This is only the second time I've ever done this. I've been this is the first time I did it, so please bear with me. And if we do go over time, I apologize. So, first thing you want to do is create a new actor, and we're going to call this periodic. Well, actually, I'm going to make this easy on me and you. No, no, no. Let's do this properly because you're going to be having to, you're going to have to do this because there's no other text really out there besides the defaults. So I'll actually go with you. We can do it for our next one. I'm going to call it just the same thing I called the other one, periodic floating text, and that's fine. I want this to be a text 
actor type, and I want it to, to not be a doodad. Don't know if it's a huge deal, but it's a good idea. So there, now we've created it. Now, actor filter, I want self ally. Alright, actor flags. Uh, we want scale to host. Fog visibility, we want hidden. Options, use walkable height. If I remember right, yes. Have to remember, guys. And for your suffix here, since this is going to be for, we're going to call this minerals. That's the name of my unit. That's a good idea. Just call it whatever the name of your unit is or whatever it's going to be attached to. Or even your behavior would be a better idea. Um, but in this case, this is fine. We'll get to events in a minute. Hosting, very important. We change this to alias. And we want it to unit. Uh, accepted translations, status, and model, even though we don't really need them. We'll put them there anyway. Continuous is fine. Inherited properties, don't need warp group, but we do need visibility, scale, variance, and scale. Uh, so there we go. Now we can actually set things up here. Font size, 28 is a good font. Size, you can always change that. I want this to start at 3 offset. And our text, I want to say plus 10 minerals. And let's go ahead and style this. So, let me highlight it. And since minerals are kind of bluish, we're going to kind of find a nice blue here. And I'm going to pick it. And I'm going to go ahead and. Ugh. There we go. So it'll be a nice blue. Now if you color it here, it's going to color the entire text no matter what you put there. So it's a good idea to leave the color there alone and just change it in your text box um, instead. Oh, I forgot. If you notice, my text is gone. What happened? What the heck happened there? It's a very good question. You might notice text key is blank. If you go anywhere else and you're uh, modifying like a tooltip, a name, or whatever you can have like a little test key. What this is, if you pull up, sorry, if you pull up your text, uh, your text stuff. Sorry about that. You're gonna see all of them here, and this keeps track of all your different stuff. Right here, the ID is where it's actually pulling from. So on my for my other one, I created something just called float text, and you can see there it is, and it gives you a little preview of what it's going to look like. You can uh, change the font, so it's 16. We did 28, so it's going to kind of look like that. Trust me, that looks huge, but it's not. So in order to do what we want to do, we need to create a text key here. So I called the other one float text. Now if I did this and left it, as you notice, see popped it in. So you can actually share text with other stuff and other keys just by using the keys and doing all the texting there. We don't want that. We want this to be minerals. So we do that. And looky, looky, looky. It keeps everything, but if we do this, all we have to change is a couple of things. Click OK. And we go into our text editor here, and you'll see minerals, float text. So that's what that's for. They're, they're basically key IDs, and you'll find them here and there. Uh, using them in text strings is very, very useful. And in this case, you actually have to create one, create a new key in order to do that. Now, you can either just type in your key there. If you're not very comfortable doing that, I believe you can create a key here. Uh, doesn't look like you can. So yeah, the only, oh, here we go, insert, new line, hotkey, image, I, I'm not sure. It looks like you can do it that way, I'm not sure exactly how. I would just go ahead, make sure you type whatever name that you want to call it, and you always put a backslash, or a forward slash at the end. Be careful, though, because you don't want to write it. If you do use something that already exists, it will pop up. So you'll know if you're using something you shouldn't be. And I do want to bring up the scale just a tad, even though it's going to get rescaled. So there is our basic 
stuff. Now all we need to do, if we tried to run this in game, it would not do, it, it wouldn't show up. It wouldn't be there. Or it might be, no, it wouldn't be there at all. And that's because we have to set up our events. And this is very in-depth and there's a lot to it. And so we're going to go do that next here in part three because we are just about out of time for this video. But in part three, we'll go through the events and the uh, basically the actor events editor. And this is big because not only does it deal with what we're doing here with floating text, but this can also be done for animations and much, much, much more. So please stay tuned for part three.